Knowledge is power. Make an impact by learning more. Call us right now for more help at 866-945-8070. So here's how you record accrued property taxes in QuickBooks Online. We're going to assume that it's January of 2017, a year ago as of the time I'm recording this. And in the previous year, in 2016, uh, our property taxes were about 25000 So we want to create a monthly accrual for one twelfth of that, right? So we just take 25000 divided by 12, and we get 2083.33 as our monthly accrual. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here, and we're going to make a journal entry. And the idea again is to normalize. We want the property tax expense hitting about, you know, evenly every month, right? So 283.33, and we need a credit for the same amount. Okay, and the debit is going to go to the expense. It's going to be 131.17, right? Property, if I could type properly, property taxes. Right, since I don't actually have it on these books, we'll add it as an expense account. Okay, and for the detail type, it's not advertising. We're just gonna put it under Office General Administrative for now. And this goes to property taxes payable. That's why we call it an accrual, because we're accruing it and putting in a liability. We're gonna pay it later, right? So this will just do uh, other current liabilities here. Other current liabilities, again, for the detail type, save and close. So estimated monthly property taxes. Let's try and do this with proper typing. Monthly property taxes. All right, copy that down. And you might want to even, oh, I wouldn't, for the estimates, I wouldn't necessarily break it down by property. Although you could, right? You could. So... Let's do this, and we're going to save and close. Because the, you know, the problem here is if it's January and I've gotten my property tax bill, which is really for 2016 property taxes, what most people are doing is they're entering that bill, putting the whole amount of property taxes in January of 20, well, remember, we're assuming it's January of 2017. So we're putting the whole property tax expense that really applied to the prior year, and we're putting it in now and we're, we're putting it all in the month of january so our profit and loss is going to be very badly skewed it's really hard to analyze a business properly that way and see what does it truly cost us to operate each month right so that's the challenge here so instead of booking a whole bill for twenty-five thousand when we got it we're going to do the accrual right and so now if i go to reports and let's just go right to recommended we'll run a profit and loss right and we'll say last year since it's really last year, I'm just pretending it's last year. Um, monthly. So now we have my property taxes, right? So other, if I had done it the way most people do it, I would have had like $30,000 in this account all in January and then nothing the rest of the year, right? doesn't make sense. We're, we're paying the taxes for the privilege of owning the property, you know, all year long. So... Next, what we want to do is let's go back to that journal entry. By the way, great way to get back to a transaction you just did is right there. And what you would want to do if it truly was January of 2017 and you were doing this is make it recurring, right? So we would call this accrued, we can call it property tax accruals. It's a cruel world. <laughs> okay, uh, and then we can do it scheduled, right? And we can create it zero days in advance on the first day of the month. And since we just did January, this would the start date would be February of the following month. We'd save it, and this would just hit the account every single month. Now, since I don't have the luxury of actually being able to go back in time for a year and doing it and getting it caught up, what I'm going to do now is I'll save the template, and actually I'll just do it unscheduled for now because then I'm just gonna kind of click it off, right? So let's go back to, this should be last year, and let's total this by month, actually. Here's what we're gonna do, actually. Rather than even use that, I'm just gonna go into this one, and I'm going to go more, and I'm gonna copy it to the last day in February of 2017 to 2817, right? All right, and then we'll just hit save, 
Okay, so off recording, I finished it. And you see how this looks? So now every month I have an, it's an estimate, we know that, but I have it. And it's pretty close, of course, because of rounding and decimals. You know, we don't quite get to the 25,000. That's okay, because it was just an estimate anyway, right? Because now what's going to happen is we're going to get the actual bill. And let's say the actual bill for this year, because oftentimes property taxes go up because property values go up. Right, so the actual bill is for $30,575. So we have to create an entry to get the proper amounts in here. First, we want the expense right for the year of 2017, but then we want the uh, property taxes payable to be accurate, right? So we need to look at two reports real quick. Let's uh, get my sidebar back open. Let's go to reports. We're gonna run a profit and loss for last year last year run it and then we're gonna also look at the balance sheet because that's where the property taxes payable is of course let's go to reports recommended balance sheet last year now of course I'm not gonna have you go back and change every single one of those months entries I just need it right as of the end of the year so December is gonna be a little skewed because that's when we're gonna post the entry right so we need some numbers in here and we're going to use my famous trial balance adjustment template to get this right. The only thing is we're not doing the whole trial balance. We're just looking at property tax expense and property taxes payable, right? So right now, property tax expense is 24,999.96, right? So let's put that in here. It's gonna be a debit 24,999.96, right? Property taxes payable is gonna be a credit. Should be the same amount. Survey says it is, right? Over here, we're going to enter in the amounts that it should be. So the right amount of the expense we said was 30575 So we put that here, and we put that here. So my entry balances, because the difference is the same, because the starting numbers are the same for both accounts, and the ending numbers are the same for both accounts. So here's our entry. This is what we need to do to property tax expense and property taxes payable to get it right. So we're gonna hit December with a little bit extra money um, in expense. So it's not perfect, but it's a lot better because here's the other thing that I didn't mention that I really wanted to. If I go over here to the correct browser session, look at what we're doing all year long now. We're actually accruing, so we're seeing a liability so that you don't have to get that bill for $30,575 and say, oh my God, I didn't know I was gonna have to pay so much money because you've been accruing it all along. So in theory, and hopefully, you'd be setting aside money as the year goes on because you'd be looking at that each month as it increases with each month's accrual and saying, I better set that money aside. Now, if you did that, if you did your job well, then you'd only have to come up with an extra $5,500 to make up the difference, right? So let's post the entry. Let's see what this looks like. We're gonna go make a journal entry. And we're going to date it 12 31 17 55 75 i believe was the amount correct 55 75 oh four got to be exact kids and if i just copied the number properly that would work out really well okay so we're going to debit the property tax expense because we're increasing it by the way this template will do that work for you <clears throat> if we needed more if we had accrued more than we needed you know it would go the other way it would be a credit if the property taxes were in fact less so this journal entry tells you exactly or this template rather tells you exactly how to create the journal entry right so this goes to the property tax expense and this goes to the property taxes payable and since it's quickbooks online we can type payable even though we know it's in the middle of the account title <clears throat> so we get the property taxes payable and I would say save and close, right? And now I have the correct payable amount and I have the correct property tax expense amount. Now, when I total this by month, you're going to see that it's skewed slightly because in the month of December, we made up for the uh, under accrual <clears throat> throughout the year. So what we'd want to do now for the following year is increase our estimate and say, well, now let's base it on 30575 maybe even add an increase to that, so, you know, assuming that's what we expect to see happen over the course of this year. That, my friends, is how and why you should accrue property uh, estimated property taxes in QuickBooks Online.